California is the most populated state in the United States and it's home to some of the biggest cities in the country. Despite having a higher GDP than Canada and Mexico combined, California still has no viable public transit route between the state's two biggest economic centers, Los Angeles and San Francisco. Today for American High Speed Rail Week 2, I'll be discussing the California High Speed Rail Project. Currently, if you want to travel between Los Angeles and San Francisco, you can either endure a 6 hour drive not even accounting for traffic, you could take a bus which will take even longer than driving, you can fly which is expensive and inconvenient, or you can take an Amtrak train which takes 12 hours and takes you across the bay to Oakland. This dilemma is exactly what voters considered in the California state election of 2008 when they approved $9 billion in state funding for a future high-speed rail link between these two cities. This project would later come to be known as California High-Speed Rail, and since I already explained the history of this project in last year's American High-Speed Rail Week, I'll just give you a quick crash course. Chapter 1. History in 1996, the California High-Speed Rail Authority was created to plan a ballot measure for voters to vote for funding for a high-speed rail network connecting California's two biggest urban centers of LA and San Francisco. By 2008, a plan was laid out to get funding for $9 billion in state funding, and in order to secure this funding, they would have to run trains at speeds of at least 200 miles per hour, have a travel time of fewer than 2 hours and 40 minutes between LA and San Francisco, and to be financially self-sustainable, meaning that the revenue made from operating trains would recoup the operating and maintenance costs. If these plans were not met, the project would not receive funding. Luckily, this plan was supported by about 53% of voters, mostly in the Bay Area, so the project barely got away with funding. By 2010, a system was planned out with a loose alignment between the two cities, which we'll now get into in the next part of the video. Chapter 2. The Route As I just said, by 2010, the general route alignment was decided on, and let's just say it wasn't the best. Now, it's common knowledge that the most direct route between two points is a straight line, but it seems that the people managing this project didn't ever learn this in school, because instead of loosely following the Pacific coastline up the whole way, the proposed route takes a turn way far inland, being rooted through the Central Valley, which is home to such cities as Bakersfield, Fresno, and Merced. All cities with decent populations, but nothing compared to the two main cities. Anyways, this route was split into two phases, with phase one initially being from Anaheim, California, just south of LA, to the planned Salesforce Transit Center in San Francisco, which is currently just a bus terminal. Additionally, phase one would include a branch line to Merced with a high speed Y, so trains wouldn't have to slow down much when joining the main line. Phase two would expand this branch line to Sacramento and add another branch line from Los Angeles to San Diego via San Bernardino. Throughout 2010 and 2011, environmental impact studies began in the Central Valley, and over the course of those two years, the federal government granted an additional $6.25 billion in funding to the project, deeming it, along with a handful of other projects, to be among the biggest future high-speed rail projects in the country. Finally, in 2012, California Governor Jerry Brown approved the construction of the initial Phase 1 mainline, and an official alignment between Los Angeles and San Francisco was finalized. So with that, construction was ready to begin, but before we learn about the construction project, let's first learn about the route. The decided alignment is a 380 mile stretch between the two aforementioned cities of LA and San Francisco, but let's take a look at what the line will look like for Phase 1 of the project. Beginning at the existing King Street Station in San Francisco, the line will run on the Caltrain Corridor south to San Jose de Redon Station, with an intermediate stop at Millbrae Station for some trains. South of San Jose, the line will continue on Caltrain onwards towards Gilroy, which is the end of the line for Caltrain. South of Gilroy, the line will make a turn east to a line built completely from scratch for high-speed rail, heading towards Madera, but between Gilroy and Madera, the aforementioned high-speed Y will allow for some trains to turn north towards Merced and eventually Modesto, Stockton, and Sacramento once phase 2 of the project is completed. After Madera, the line will begin heading south with the next stop in Fresno. After Fresno will be Kings Tulare, which is near Hanford. Next, the line will head southeast to Bakersfield before descending into the Los Angeles Basin, stopping at Palmdale with an eventual connection to Brightline West which I'll talk about later. After Palmdale, the line will continue south loosely following the Metrolink Antelope Valley line, stopping at Burbank Airport before reaching the end of the line at Los Angeles Union Station. Additionally, there are plans to have the line continue south to Anaheim, but that part of the project has been temporarily put on hold. Finally, for Phase 2. 
In addition to the expansion north from Merced to Sacramento, phase 2 of the project will also continue south from Los Angeles to San Diego via San Bernardino. Speed limits on the line will be 110 miles per hour between San Francisco and Gilroy and 220 miles per hour between Gilroy and Los Angeles using double tracking along the entire line except for in stations which will have four tracks to allow for express trains to overtake stopping trains. Alright, now that I've explained the line in good detail, we can talk more about the construction process. Chapter 3, Construction Ground was officially broken in the Central Valley in 2015, with initial construction being split into four so-called CPs or construction packages. Those being CP1, Madera to just south of Fresno where construction began in 2015, CP2 and CP3 continuing south to around Kings Tulare, construction began in 2018, and CP4 which continued to just south of Bakersfield beginning in 2019. As of right now, construction is ongoing for the 119 miles between Madera and Bakersfield, and most of the infrastructure to support the tracks such as bridges, viaducts, and other forms of grade separation are almost completed, and sometime in 2022, it's expected that tracks, signals, and overhead electric wires will be installed on this 119 mile segment of the line. Funding for the rest of Phase 1 is expected to be received at some point in the near future too, as by the end of 2023, all environmental studies will be completed between Los Angeles and San Francisco. When all is said and done, the first segment, the 170 mile line from Bakersfield to Merced, will hopefully begin service in 2029, with the line opening further north to San Francisco in 2031, and finally fully starting service on all of Phase 1 between LA and San Francisco in 2033. Of course, these dates are still tentative, and for years they've been pushing back the initial date of service, but with the current pace that construction is moving along at, it's actually looking like these dates for initial service could be met. It's all just a matter of whether construction is managed effectively. Chapter 4, Infrastructure In terms of the specific infrastructure being used, California High Speed Rail will use a lot of grade separation, often running trains over viaducts separated from railroad crossings and other issues posed by tracks at grade. This grade separation, along with gentle curves, will allow for trains to go at speeds never seen before in the United States. This line will obviously be electrified, but it will use 25kV at 60Hz alternating current, which is generally accepted to be the standard for high-speed train lines being used on the Amtrak Northeast Corridor between Boston and New Haven and Japan's Tokaido Shinkansen. Aside from the grade separated 220 mph section between Gilroy and Los Angeles, California High Speed Rail will share the line with Caltrain Commuter Rail, which will be less grade separated with a top speed of only 110 miles per hour. Chapter 5 Connections Since California High Speed Rail spans across a big state, naturally it'll have quite a few connections, but what specifically are they? For this, I'll only be mentioning the commuter rails and future high speed rails that California High Speed Rail will connect to, as there are a lot of other transit methods that it'll connect with, but the other railroads are the most significant. Let's begin at the northernmost part of the line and make our way south. As I just mentioned, California High Speed Rail will share the line with Caltrain between San Francisco and Gilroy, which will soon be electrified, but these plans for electrification have been underway for a while, as Caltrain's CalMod project plans to begin electrified service on their line between San Francisco and San Jose in late 2024, or let's be realistic, early 2025. Anyways, that doesn't really matter because California High Speed Rail won't reach San Francisco until at least 2030, but Caltrain has planned in advance for their arrival, as their new Stadler Kiss electric trains have doors at two different heights allowing for them to use the same platforms as the taller California High Speed Rail trains. South of San Jose, California High Speed Rail will be in charge of installing overhead wires, and it's still to be determined whether Caltrain will operate its electric trains using these wires, or whether they'll continue to run traditional diesel trains south of San Jose. After sharing the line with Caltrain as far south as Gilroy, California High Speed Rail won't directly share any existing line with any other railroads, but that doesn't mean it won't be able to connect with those other railroads. In Merced, California High Speed Rail will connect with Altamont Corridor Express, which is expanding to Merced as part of their Valley Rail extension. Additionally, this line will run parallel to the Phase 2 expansion to Sacramento. Merced, Madera, and Bakersfield will feature a connection to Amtrak's San Joaquin's, which will loosely parallel California High Speed Rail in the Central Valley. Finally, in Palmdale, California High Speed Rail will connect to privately funded Brightline West, which is another high speed rail project opening around the same time between Los Angeles and Las Vegas. Brightline West plans to operate a line between Palmdale and Victorville, where some trains will terminate and presumably some will go straight to Las Vegas from Palmdale, allowing for passengers to easily connect from California High Speed Rail to Brightline West. Additionally, Palmdale will allow for connections to local commuter rail Metrolink. Chapter 6, The Trains Now for the fun part, the trains. 
Unlike how Brightline West already has plans to buy Siemens Valaro trains, California High Speed Rail still hasn't decided on what specific trains it'll operate, but that doesn't mean they aren't looking. In January of 2015, the California High Speed Rail Authority submitted a request for a proposal for a train to operate on this line with some very specific requirements. Trains would need to be able to sustain speeds of 220 miles per hour, have a top speed of at least 242 miles per hour, a lifespan of 30 years, a length no longer than 680 feet, the ability to double up trains, and a bunch of other things that one would expect for high speed trains to have. As of now, no contract has been awarded yet, but a total of six manufacturers are currently interested, with those being Alstom, CRRC, Hyundai Rotem, Hitachi, Kawasaki, and Siemens. As of right now, it's too early to know which manufacturer will win the contract. As of right now, it's too early to know which manufacturer will win the contract. The California High Speed Rail Authority will most likely place multiple orders for trains, as the initial Merced to Bakersfield segment of the line will need only four trains initially. But once the full Phase 1 build is completed, another 12 trains will be needed. But the authority estimates that once service is in full swing, they'll need as many as 95 train sets. Unfortunately, since no manufacturer has won the contract yet, it's pretty hard to say what trains will look like, but over the years there have been some renderings, with the first being a train reminiscent of France's TGV duplex, and later renderings looking more like a Siemens Valaro train, once again similar to that of Brightline West. Generally, equipment orders take about 4-5 to five years to be fulfilled, so if the plan is to begin service in 2029, a contract will most likely be awarded sometime around 2023 or 2024. Chapter 7, My Opinion Ah yes, my opinion on this project. In the original video I made about California High Speed Rail, I poked quite a bit of fun at this project as construction has been infamously delayed and that's definitely not good. But I also have some critiques about the project itself. I do think that it's not great that the line will operate in basically the middle of nowhere for the first few years of its life, but it's less about the fact that the line will initially only operate in the Central Valley and more that it will operate there in the first place. In order to adhere to the 3 hour travel time between both ends of the line, California High Speed Rail will have to operate at 220 miles per hour, which is an unprecedented speed for North American railroads. I think that if it just bypassed these cities, taking a more direct route as I said in the beginning, California High Speed Rail could run at more realistic speeds. Of course, I could be missing something, and I'm sure there are a bunch of reasons why California High Speed Rail doesn't take the direct route, but that's just my opinion. Other than that, I'm always supportive of more trains, as obviously I'm a rail fan, so I don't really have any other critiques. I truly am excited for the future of this project, despite the fact that there will most certainly be more challenges in its future. Chapter 8, Conclusion Overall, we can really only hope for the best when it comes to California High Speed Rail, but I'm certainly hopeful for the future of this line, because as I said, I'm always open to having more trains, but this project is certainly not going to happen overnight. As the years go on, I'm sure there will be more and more delays to the project, but hopefully sometime, maybe 15 or 20 years from now, California High Speed Rail will finally provide the much needed high speed rail connection between California's two biggest cities that it set out to create decades prior. This has been an episode of American High Speed Rail Week 2 presented by Worldwide Railfan. If you're watching this when it's new, stay tuned for tomorrow's episode, but if you're watching this after it's been uploaded, then click on the end cards to see the previous and preceding videos of this series. Additionally, if you want to see more content like this in the future, do consider subscribing as these videos take a lot of work to make and your support is always appreciated. With that said, thank you for watching and I'll see you soon in another episode.